Welcome back, it's day three. And I've really just been thinking about depression as like an illness or whatever you wanna call it. But it's not like a normal thing where if you have a flu or something, you get medicine and then the flu's gone. Depression's always kind of there and it can pop up at any time. And for me, it was really about finding the right balance of things to cope with it. So before, I used to just exercise if I was feeling really depressed. Just go on like the longest walk that I could and that's all I really knew how to do. But now, you kind of have to find your own mixture of what works for you. So for me, that's taking my medicine when I'm supposed to, um, exercising, going to therapy if I need it, uh, meditation and mindfulness, and living a life of purpose. And a lot of those things I hadn't really done before. I'd never meditated or done any mindfulness things. My purpose was all just living through other people and I refused to go to therapy for the longest time but I think you have to figure out your own approach just taking medicine isn't gonna work it's not the magic pill just going to therapy and not having any purpose in your life isn't gonna work and so you really have to figure out what works for you and I think that sometimes the hardest part is trying to balance all these things and figure out what works for you. And I recently discovered what works for me. I wasn't really searching for it specifically, but just trying to figure out everything and just going through my journey, I kind of figured it out, I guess. So I'm feeling a lot better today. I did all the things that I needed to do. I <clears throat> worked through it healthily for one of the first times, I think. And I didn't get too low. I wasn't feeling very good, but I didn't get as low as I was before. And I think that's because I started to find my balance and my purpose. So today I'm going to be rereading a book called The Four Agreements. And I know people don't like self-help books and all of that, but for me, it really helped me to be more positive in life and have just a better outlook and realize that you kind of control your own destiny when it comes to positivity. There's always going to be negative things that pop up, but you ultimately are able to control the positive things that happen in your life and you can try and limit the negative things that happen and accept more of the positive things into your life. So I'm going to be rereading that book today and then I'll probably uh, just finish today with a little review or any insight that I gained from rereading. All right, so chapter one of the four agreements, if I had to rename the chapter, I would probably name it how we all got so screwed up to begin with. So I'm going to go through a chain of events here that is the book's way of describing how we get to the miserable life that a lot of us have right now and how we get so messed up to begin with. So the very first thing is attention. So attention is the ability we have to discriminate and to focus only on which we want to perceive. So I thought that was really cool from the very beginning is that we're already accepting some things and not accepting other things. So we think about attention and focus as being good, but if I'm so focused on my cell phone, for example, I might be missing the entire world out there that's actually really beautiful and I might be only focused on the drama or whatever that's happening online. So the chain of events go attention and then hooked attention. So hooked attention is um, our parents, teachers, church, whatever, um, 
trying to focus our attention on them. And then repetition. So when you're first learning like how to speak, your parents will repeat dad, 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 until you eventually say dad. Um, same thing with rules and things like that, saying thank you. They repeat it and repeat it until you accept it and believe it. Then we have agreement. So when you accept whatever their rule is, that's an agreement. So in our lives, we have thousands of agreements that we've accepted from other people. Then we have domestication of humans, which is pretty much us accepting all the rules and beliefs that society has given to us at such a young age. Um, punishment and reward. So it kind of points out that we um, guide our children the same way that we would like domesticate an animal with punishment and reward. So if you do something bad, you get a spanking. If you do something good, you get good boy, good girl, or you get a treat or whatever. And so the punishment and reward system is the same way that we help our children grow up as how we domesticate animals. And because of that, we internally want to maximize reward and limit our punishment. So we're going to do things that make other people happy instead of doing things that we would get otherwise punished for. So we're adhering to these agreements that were set forth by our parents and other organizations so that we're maximizing our rewards and limiting punishment. That creates a false self, which um, the book calls the book of law. So we have all these agreements and we're eager to please everyone else, which creates a false self within us. And we have this book of law, which are the agreements that we accepted that we live our lives by. Um, we also have um, self-punishment, which is the judge. So instead of us getting um, rewards and punishment from outside, our self internalizes that and becomes the judge within us. So then we punish ourselves for things that we do bad by talking down to ourselves and we usually it's negative um, which also creates the victim which is the next one and so we have the judge within us and we have the victim and the victim is the one that says i don't deserve this or i'm stupid things like that after that comes fear so because we have the judge within us it creates fear because we don't want to do things still that um, we'll get punishment from ourselves or um, do things that wouldn't adhere to the book of law from other people. So we're already being someone else and not our true selves because we don't want to look bad in front of other people or we don't want to break the laws that we uh, created when we were young. Then we have um, repetitive punishment for a singular mistake. So if we do something wrong, we beat ourselves up over it and we punish ourselves more than once over and over and over again. And that leads to suffering. And then this is a point that it goes into that's probably a little controversial, but essentially it's saying if you look at hell as a state of mind and not as an actual place, then essentially when we're in this state, we're living in our own concept of hell. So if you think about punishment and like misery and suffering and all of these bad emotions, in the state of mind that we're in at this point, it's very similar to hell as a concept and not as a physical place. After that, there is false belief and the blindness from the truth. So because we have uh, this book of law, it's basically all based on these beliefs of other people. And so we lose ourselves in that. And we have this book of law and all these beliefs and you start to lose yourself and you don't know who you actually are anymore, which creates a mental fog. So it describes mental fog as 
thousands of voices in your head all talking at the same time and none of them can be understood. And I really relate to that um, just with like the repetitive things going on in my head and not being able to really decipher them or know what I'm supposed to do and just having it play over and over again in my head. Um, after that we have we don't know um, that we aren't free. So because we're following all these laws and we have this mental fog, we're just doing everything that we can to adhere to the book of law and we're not even capable of knowing that we aren't free anymore because we're just so caught up in this punishment reward and following these the book of law which was originally from beliefs we um, then we're scared to exist as our true self because of all of these beliefs that we have and we have self-rejection so we internalize that we can't be ourselves, we're scared to be ourselves, we don't know who our self is, and so we continue on on this vicious cycle. Then we have a false image of perfection. So we have all of these laws and we think that if we can just follow all of these laws that we can be perfect, but really there is no perfection out there. So we wear this social mask, which is how we act in front of others to make ourselves look perfect. And we're so scared internally of not looking perfect that we just adhere to these rules. It's also called schemas in some um, psych psychiatric um, terms. And then we have self-abuse. So because we can't be perfect, we continue to ab abuse ourselves. And then we also will accept slightly less abuse from other people. So the book argues that you can never be abused more than how you abuse yourself because we're so hard on, our, on ourselves and we talk down to ourselves so much and that in, if you're in a relationship that's slightly more abusive than yourself, you'll recognize that your self-worth is higher than that, but you'll accept up to the limit of how abusive you are to yourself. So. That's it, that's just the very first chapter of kind of describing how we get to this place that we're at. But from then on, it goes into how we break down all of these um, laws and agreements and start over and create our own.